four-year-old boy fired a gun at police officers in Utah, get this, on the instructions of his father, according to police. A bullet hole remains in the side of a McDonald's restaurant where the boy fired the gun. It started after the boy's father got the wrong drive through order and then brandished a weapon at workers. So the workers told him to pull over to the side. They'd get him the right order. That's when they called police. But when police showed up, they say the boy pointed the gun at them from the back seat. No one was hurt. The father is now being held without bond. But it's another example of people shooting at police officers. You'll remember nine officers were hurt recently during a standoff in Arizona. So far this year, five officers nationwide have been shot and killed in the line of duty. That's according to a police memorial group. Joe Gamaldi, the Fraternal Order of Police National Vice President, joins us now. Joe, it's good to have you back. Uh, we were just saying the other day that it, it, that it seems like people used to either give up, all right, you got me, or run from cops. Now they shoot at them and don't think twice about it. In this case, a four-year-old boy, apparently his dad told him to shoot at police. Yeah, I think it's important to show just how bad it really is. Last year, we had 346 police officers shot in this country. That's a record since we started tracking this data about seven years ago. And that's a 40% increase since 2018. And this year, we're off to an incredibly bad start. We've already seen 60 police officers shot, which is actually a 60% increase over last year's historic numbers. And the FBI just released a study that 2021 was the deadliest year for law enforcement for intentional homicides in 25 years. So I think when you look at this case of this four-year-old shooting at an officer because the father convinced him to do it, I mean, that's the insanity that we're dealing with right now out, out here on these streets. Mm -hmm. And I'm still an active sergeant, and I warn my officers before they hit the streets every night, you have to be careful because people are thinking less and less of shooting us, and they're thinking less and less of killing us because they know they're not going to be held accountable thanks to the revolving door criminal justice system. So what we really need is for the community to step up with a loud voice and let politicians know we are not going to allow this chaos and anarchy in our streets. Well, we're seeing so much of it. We're looking at this video now. This is from the Phoenix shooting where the, the officers were ambushed after they brought a baby out. That was the first officer to arrive on the scene. He was ambushed as well. There was a carjacking here. I, I should say carjacking suspects here in Chicago. Police stopped them, and they didn't uh, think twice about stopping and shooting at the police. How how do we stop this, Joe? Is this a, a societal, a cultural issue? Because it's almost becoming the norm. Yeah, well, I think we really need to get a handle on what's going on in our criminal justice system. That law enforcement, police officers are just one component in that system. And until we start embracing the rule of law, until we start vehemently prosecuting violent crime, and I mean they receive no quarter when they commit violent crimes, and we embrace broken windows theories, we can start to get this stuff back on track because that's what worked previously. The American police officer delivered historic crime reductions in 20 years prior to this spike that we've seen over the last few years, and we can do it again. But I'll tell you right now, if these politicians are allowed to operate the way they have been, if they're allowed to continue to let people out on, you know, PR bonds where the guy just pinky promises to show up to the court, we're going to continue to see this. And I mean, the, the consequences are deadly, Joe. Last year, we saw 16 American cities experience their highest murder rate on record. Right. And you know what? It was all our urban communities. They deserve to have safe streets just like the rest of us. Joe, you mentioned the broken window theory. I'm guessing by that you mean taking care of the little things that might lead to cleaning up the big things. And on that note, I guess we can talk about what's happening in a city where you used to work, and that's New York City. There were eight attacks on the subway over the past weekend, I believe, six stabbings, including a guy with a hatchet. I mean, does cracking down as they're doing now on the subways on fare jumpers and the homeless fix this? Are these the little things we need to address to try to do better on the big things? Well, you know, a recent Quinnipiac poll done in New Yorkers, and it showed that 74% of New Yorkers believe crime was a serious problem, and they're right. Shootings are up 42% in New York, and you mentioned the subways. Subway crime is up 65%. Slashings in the subway are up 35%. Now, I certainly applaud Mayor Adams for developing this new program and wanting to crack down on what's going on in our subways, but as I said, 
We're just one component. So believe me, the police officers are going to get out there. They're going to catch these dirtbags that are cutting people with knives in the subway. But if the DA's office, specifically DA Bragg in Manhattan, just lets them right back out, we're not going to be able to have an impact. I mean, what we really need is for that DA's office, and specifically Alvin Bag, to grow a spine and actually listen to what the community wants. They don't want the revolving door. And just to give you an example, they just decrease the charge from a grand larceny to a pettit larceny on Claude Myers, who'd been arrested 46 times previously, was already out on parole, and they cut him a sweetheart deal. I mean, does anybody really think that's logical? Are you worried at all, Joe, about the uh, effort to recruit more police officers when you see this? I mean, at some point, there were people who were afraid of becoming a cop because they didn't want to be, uh, you know, involved in the danger of the job itself. Now they're almost becoming a target. And the question is, is this a public people want to serve when this is going on? Well, I'll tell you this, you know, the hardworking men and women of law enforcement are always going to support our communities and we're always going to be there to protect you. But I'd be lying if I didn't tell you that recruitment is in the tank. A recent study of, of uh, out in Colorado, 70% of agencies said they can't find anybody to take the job. In the New York State Troopers, they've had a 90% reduction in applications. And if you just look what's mm. going on nationally with retirements and resignations, 45% retirements are up, resignations are up 20%. Yeah. We can't find anybody to take this job. So what's gonna happen? They're gonna have to lower standards and that's only gonna exacerbate the problem further. We need to make sure, uh, listen, we know that the majority of the community loves us and appreciates us, but we need you to stand up for us too. You need to show up to your city council meetings. You need to email your elected officials and make sure that they're supporting law enforcement in your community. Joe Gamaldi, National Vice President for the Fraternal Order of Police. It's good to have you again, Joe. Thanks for the time. Thanks for having me on.